G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today we're in the lab and we're looking at a power supply for a projector jump starter. Let's check it out together. doing electronics as a hobbyist now for roughly about 10 years and of course my skills hopefully have improved over those years. This power supply here was one of the very first things that I tried to repair and I failed epically. I'm hoping now that I can sort this thing out and get it up and running. This power supply here is designed to charge the batteries in a 12 24 volt jump starting pack. That's this bad boy right here. I've had it for a number of years, of course, as mentioned, it was getting thrown away because they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. Of course, the batteries are dead now, but back in the day, this was actually quite pricey and you don't see too many of these 12, 24 volt jump starting systems. So let's get the power supply on the bench and have a look and see if we can fix it together. As you can see, I scored three of these little individual power supplies and as I said, I wasn't very successful with my previous attempt, so hopefully we can get it sorted today. I'm gonna to be focusing on, on this guy over here, so we'll put these aside. I've had this apart several times before, so we'll just pop the lid off, put that to one side, and of course the base, then we can actually work on the actual power supply itself. It has an AC input with roughly around about a 14 volt output, which is gonna charge those uh, two 12 volt batteries that we have for 12 24 volt jump starting. Without going into it too much, I've already established that there is no voltage here whatsoever. That's our output. So we've got things like a fuse to check. We've got a little NTC thermistor here, which is also used as a sort of a fuse. We've got diodes down here, an inductor, a capacitor, an inrush resistor, a uh, most likely a MOSFET, I assume. We've got a little pulse width modulated um, signal down here. And of course, we've got an optocoupler over this side here. So what I'll be doing, I've already established that there's no power on my output side and it's divided on the hot side and the cold side is what it's called. So we're gonna start checking and see firstly if our fuse has had it. First things first, I need to check that fuse. And just from a good visual, I can see that it's not happy. Of course, I've got my power turned off at the moment and I've got this on ohms. My multimeter is on ohms. I'm just gonna check across there and it's an open circuit, of course. Next thing we need to check and see is this little NTC thermistor. Is that had it? That should have low ohms. Uh, let's have a look there. And it's got low ohms, so we know that that's okay. Just keep in mind this filter cap will still have charge in it and will give you a nasty bite. So I do need to uh, get rid of that uh, voltage that's hidden in there, but I'll do some other checks first, just with my diodes. I'll move from my diodes forwards. So with our diodes, we need to put our multimeter on the diode range, of course, and test across our diodes. And we have 0.5 one way, that's good. Should be nothing that way. Oh, we've got 0.5 both ways. That's a little bit strange, isn't it? Uh, let's try these two over here. 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So does that mean that these are open circuit compared to one another? Well, not necessarily. Let's move further forward. There's another couple of diodes in the middle there. My big fat head might get in the road, so just bear with me. That's okay. And let's go backwards. We should have 0.5, that's okay. And we've got uh, no voltage that way. We should have 0.5 that way or roughly, there we go. Does that mean that our bridge rectifier is had it, these little diodes causing the problem? Well, that can be a little bit tricksy. I now need to flip it over and take off one of the legs of each of these and just see uh, what's exactly the problem. Just keep in mind, I do have to dissipate the voltage in this filter cap first. I built this tool many years ago and it's really, really good. I've just got a couple of nails soldered onto a couple of resistors in series and that dissipates the voltage. Let's check the voltage first at the uh, filter cap and see what we need to drain away. We're only looking at very minimal uh, capacitance there or voltage. 
uh, that's in the millivolt range, it's 150 millivolts and of course that probably happened when the fuse blew and got rid of all that voltage when it went to a dead short. So let's just uh, knock off some of those diodes legs and then retest them and see if they're faulty or not. I've taken off a leg of each of those diodes just to cover my bases. So let's just check those. There should be continuity one way, continuity one way, uh, and opposite, there should be nothing. That one's okay. It's okay, let's try these. Uh, it should be nothing that way, nothing that way. Excuse me if I'm in the road. Then we flip our leads around the other way, of course, and we go like that, and then we go like that. All right, so I know my bridge rectifier is okay. So what's causing this short in my fuse? The fuse blue, of course. Next on our checklist is this little MOSFET over here. You can see it looks a bit hot, actually. It is a P4NK60ZFP, and it's an N-channel MOSFET. So how do we check that guy? Well, we flip him over like that. So on the diode range, we can just check across that MOSFET and see what it, it is like. There we go, we've got a dead short between there and there. So it's the MOSFET to be blamed, is it? Well, look, we've got to go one step further, guys. What is causing the short in this? Is it the MOSFET that's had it? Well, I'm going to disassemble or uh, take those legs off or unsolder those legs first and then move forward. It's no use chucking in another MOSFET only to find out that you've burnt the thing out once again. So I'll unsolder those legs and we'll check further. <coughs> I'm going to physically remove this because sometimes those little legs do like to touch the, the circuit and I'm going to check this totally out of circuit. Put our circuit board to one side and just have a look at this little guy here. It's got plenty of heat compound on the back so that shouldn't be an issue. We'll just face him up that way. So once again we shouldn't have a dead short across any one of these should we? Which we do, there's a dead short there guys. So this MOSFET is absolutely for schnookered. Is that the only problem though? Let's move forward. I'm going to test this little IC here. It's a pulse width modulated uh, IC and I'm just going to check each one of these legs into relation to this here. Now of course if it's shorted we're going to see um, a fairly low resistance on our multimeter. I'll have to zoom out to show you. I'm going to start at this pin here. I don't know what it is. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to come down. That seems okay. That seems okay. There's a short there, or it could be a, an earth point, I don't know. That's okay. That's not. That's not. And that's not. So there's like four pins that are going directly to earth, which of course is no good. There should be a ground pin, of course, but there certainly shouldn't be any others that are direct shorts. So I need to replace that IC as well. Now that I've pulled off my MOSFET over here, as well as my little IC, I've resoldered my uh, diodes here and here, as you can see, and they are working perfectly. Another thing I've done while it's all apart, I've checked for shorts along my IC as well as my MOSFET, and apart from uh, resistors, there's a uh, inrush resistor right here which gives a, a low resistance, of course, the impression of a short if you're not paying attention, but I'm happy that everything is okay. Is that going to make this thing work? Well, look, I don't know. I don't know if the secondary side of things, the cold side, is okay or not, but at least if I get this side up and running, that's electrically separated. So I shouldn't have any major effect on that side, I'm hoping. So I've got a MOSFET to put in, plus a little IC to put in. That's a pulse width modulated signal that goes through there, and that turns our little MOSFET off and on, which in turn switches our transformer. So I'm happy that everything is okay. I'll solder those bits in and then we'll move forward and of course replace our fuse over here. I've replaced my N-channel MOSFET as well as my IC controller. My MOSFET's there, my IC controller is there. I'm happy that that's working fine. Soldering points are all good. But there's one test I'd like to do before I call the repair successful, and that's by hooking up a globe in series so that we can see if there's any shorts or anything like that. If there is a short, our globe will glow 
and indicate that there is a short still in the circuit. I'm hoping that there won't be. So let's just turn on the isolation transformer and see if this fella is going to glow or not brightly at least. Let's turn that on and we have nothing happening there whatsoever. But does that indicate that the thing is actually working or not? Okay, so my next step is to put a load on my output wire, which is this guy over here. And let's see if we get any uh, output from that particular circuit. And of course, this globe here should start to glow just slightly to indicate that there is current present. I've now got a load on the output side of things in the form of a globe. Now this one here is a 12 volt globe, but it should be fine with 14 volts going through it, no problems whatsoever, which is what this little uh, power supply is rated at. Over this side, I have a current limiting device. This globe here is 100 watt, 240 volt or 250 volt. It should handle that, no problems. So what do I expect to happen? Well, when I turn this system on, or this little power supply, current will pass through this globe here, but it will be dull. It will remain dull as this globe comes on quite brightly. That would indicate that we're getting the 14 volts coming out of our little power supply here on our secondary side. And if this remains uh, dull, that would indicate that uh, current is being limited and the system is operating correctly. So let's just turn that on and see what happens. All right, we have our globe coming on quite brightly here, indicating that we have a uh, correct voltage coming out. And as you can see over this side, I might just dull that down a little bit so you can see that globe. It's a little bit dull, isn't it? And that's excellent because that indicates that there's no short. We're protecting the circuit. I can quite happily put in a fuse now and uh, I'll check my voltages at the same time. With the power now switched on, as I mentioned before, we're getting this bright light happening. And of course, current limiting is still being done by this. I haven't put a fuse in it as yet. We're getting 15.29 volts at this point. I don't know if that's acceptable or not. I'll have to hook it up to the uh, jump starter. That may have circuitry in there as well that uh, limits the amount of output of this particular power supply. But at the moment, I'm happy with this and I believe that it is a fix. And with our fuse now back in place, and just hooked up to the multimeter without a load attached, we're looking at 14.34 volts, a little more reasonable in my opinion. I brought in the jumper pack here, as you can see. It's a big beast, but the batteries are actually absolutely fish nookered. I've put in some temporary ones that hopefully can show you that this is working as well as my power supply. First things first, we'll turn this on and we'll see if we have power actually at the batteries, well, the ones that I've supplied anyway, turn them on. And if you press this, we should end up with roughly about 12 volts, as you can see, 12.2. What happens if I charge it? Well, this little guy over here should start charging. So the socket for this one is actually on the back, so I'll plug that in. We'll turn on our power supply. And as you can see here, we are charging, which is excellent. Let me show you what I've done on the back. Yes, it's a little bit messy as you can see. I've put these batteries uh, in place of where the big ones should go in there, and I've just bypassed it with <laughs> a lot of wiring as you can see. Um, the point is that what we need to see on our multimeter is 12 volts and 24 volts. We have a switch on the back that goes from uh, 12 volts as well as charging, and that is now in the charging cycle and it's going to beep until it's fully charged, which is probably pretty annoying, I'd imagine. Then we can go to our 24 volt scale. Let's have a look at our multimeter and see what that says. And it says there that we're looking at 13.45 volts. This is in the charging side of things. I'll just rip out the charging socket and let's see what it does. Although that horrible beep is still there, we have changed from charging to full. So that's great news. We can see that the charging side of things is working for our batteries through our little power supply. It's dropping back now. The batteries are fully charged, of course, and they will settle down hopefully to about 12.6 volts. Let's turn it to 24 volts. So it's just a matter of turning over this side, ah, across to the 24 volt side of things, and let's have a look at our multimeter. Combined, we have 25.45 volts, which is excellent news. I am going to classify this as a fix, although I still need to get some batteries to get the thing up and running, uh, but that's a, an expense for another day. So there we have it. After all these years of dragging this little power supply around, I've finally gained the skills and the experience to make that repair. 
In actual fact, it really wasn't that difficult in the end. I've now got a little power supply that can charge my battery pack and use that within the workshop itself. I hope you got something from this video today, guys, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give it a like and feel free to comment down below. Of course, you can follow us on Facebook as well as Instagram. And hey, don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. So until next time, guys, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.